Now at six, brand new numbers shedding a light on San Diego's growing homeless crisis. I look at the footage now and still am in disbelief that there was a river in the street. Today marks four months since flooding devastated our community, the challenges people still face. And keep an eye out for big red shoes this morning, how your spare change can help a good cause. You're watching CBS 8 Mornings at 6. Thank you so much for joining us here on this Wednesday, 6 a.m. Everyone, I'm Eric Connard. And I'm Nettie Irampour. And you're going to notice the sun will be out later today. Nice. Excited to see that. Uh, we are going to see some clearing yet again like we did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was so pretty. Mm -hmm. It was just nice to see uh, that big bright sun. And right now, of course, it's overcast still. This is downtown San Diego. And uh, there's the sun coming on up over the layer of cloud coverage. We do have that marine layer, as you can see in this view from San Miguel. Uh, but what we will see today, it's already starting, a clearing along the foothills. Uh, temperatures low 60s right now. Expect 70s in your forecast for today. So slightly warmer even than what we just had yesterday. I'll get into all of that in your full forecast. Well, this morning we are learning just how many people are experiencing homelessness across our county. The regional task force released its point in time count result just about two hours ago. CBS 8's Regina Yurita has been going through the data now joining us live in studio. Regina, what is it saying? Yeah, well, good morning, Eric and Netta. Look, judging by the numbers, it looks better. But again, more and more people are falling into ho homelessness. So back in January, volunteers with the regional task force collected this data. They were spread across the county in order to get the updated numbers of how many people are experiencing homelessness. I can tell you there is only a 3% increase from last year's point in time count. The 2023 point in time count had a 20% increase. The count found 200 more people experiencing homelessness compared to last year. This includes over 6,000 people without shelters and over 4,000 either in shelters or transitional housing. The count proves that there is not enough shelters available around the county. It also shows a significant increase in people and families living in their cars. The highest group that shows the most homelessness is among those experiencing chronic homeless. This is a group that's been unsheltered repeatedly and is dealing with a disability. Women and veterans are also among the group that shows more unsheltered people. The regional task force says while a 3% increase could seem encouraging, volunteers counted more people in unsheltered conditions across the region. They believe there needs to be even more efforts and resources for seniors, veterans, and people living in their cars. I do want to add that they counted safe sleeping and safe parking sites as, a unsheltered, as an unsheltered for people experiencing homelessness. So the regional task force has also provided regional and city-specific point-in-time information if you want to look into that. Eric Anetta. Regina, thank you. Right now, a man convicted of stalking and raping seven women in Pacific Beach in the 90s is up for early parole. 66-year-old Kenneth Bogart has served 30 years of a 96-year prison sentence. Under the elder parole law, inmates over the age of 50 who have served at least 20 years can be released early. Today's parole hearing will be held remotely. Bogart was denied parole back in 2019. And now new this morning, the county is one step closer to opening a new migrant center. The County Board of Supervisors just voted to accept more than $19 million from FEMA to pay for this. The facility will help immigrants who cross the border to reach their final destinations. A temporary center closed in February due to a lack of funding. Supervisor Jim Desmond voted against it, saying it, quote, effectively approves and perpetuates the federal government's mismanagement of the border. And now today marks four months since devastating flooding hit southeast San Diego. That flooding ruined homes, cars, a lot of personal belongings. More than 1,000 San Diegans were displaced from their homes, and many people blame the city's lack of oversight of a nearby flood channel. Data shows 443 families are still living in hotels through the county's temporary lodging program. Last night, the Housing Authority told the city council they're working to help people find housing before that voucher program ends on June 21st. So our focus is standing up programs that can help people get back into permanent or longer term housing solutions before that program ends. All day long, we are taking a look back at the day the flooding hit. C CBS 8's Chris Grow joining us live now in Mountain View to kick off our coverage of this. Good morning, Chris. Yeah, good morning, guys. We're right here on 42nd and Ocean View. This is actually, again, one of the areas where we saw some of the most dramatic damage and all of that because of the flooding. And I want to bring in Justin Lipford here 
with the YMCA because Justin has been here on the ground. You guys have been working so much with the people who live here. So we want to, again, use this opportunity here to kind of look back at some of the work that has been done right. and what still needs to be done. So, Justin, uh, first of all, what was some of the biggest needs that you heard from people that live on this street, live in this area here, as you guys obviously represent the YMCA, but wanted to help out the folks here? Yeah, so um, good morning. Yeah, I, yeah. I would say what we observed from the onset was that families on the 42nd Street needed immediate help and getting and making sure their homes were habitable. That took a whole armada of volunteers to be able to come together, help folks out, get the, get the flood damage stuff out of the homes, and really provide an opportunity for them to get onto a path of recovery. Simultaneously, as that went down, we had to ensure that folks had some short-term housing. So we were able to utilize relationships throughout the community to get these folks into immediate hotels. And, and also at the same time, you guys were very pivotal in trying to help folks out with uh, FEMA, the SBA loans and so forth like that. So once you shifted from sort of the initial, how do you guys then move into, again, trying to be that center to help provide for people? Yeah, so a lot of this is on the backdrop of the fact that in this community, the Jackie Robinson Family YMCA has been a historical part of this, the fabric of this community. So we continue to be a convener. Every Monday we provide opportunities for community members, local leaders, and, and folks with information to come together and provide answers for these community members. What are you still hearing from some of the residents that, that have been able to go back into their home and is habitable, or they're still working on making their homes habitable? What, what are you hearing from them? Well, the they all experience mass damage from the floods. They've lost virtually everything. So the first initial stage was ensuring that the homes were safe, so basically mold remediation. Once that was taken care of, then it was really a matter of bringing back the space and making a home again. So that's furniture and all the things that we consider to be home. And a lot of folks are still having a, a hard time getting that stuff together. So if someone who, who wasn't impacted by the floods is watching this right now and they want to help, is there a way that they can help, whether that be donations or volunteering their time? Yeah, so there's a great group. VOAD is a great volunteer group that is on every weekend utilizing community volunteers to still go into the various communities and neighborhoods here in Southeast to help with mold remediation. So at, at best, I'd say if you're interested in volunteering, come out to a Monday meeting at Jackie Robinson Family YMCA, learn about these opportunities, and by all means, please jump in. Okay. Justin, thank you so much. And again, we're going to continue that conversation coming up here in just about a half hour or so again. Continue to stay with CBS 8 as we continue to look back at what has happened, but also what continues to happen here in this neighborhood. Eric Canetta. Yeah, the uh, fallout from that still continues. All right, Chris, thanks. And stay tuned to CBS 8 all day long as we take a look at the challenges those people are still facing. In 30 minutes, we're going to check in with a woman who lost four cars in that flooding. Here we are four months later from that, and mm. uh, that was so much rain in such a short amount of time, right. uh, like historic levels of, of rain, and uh, no wonder why we're still having uh, issues because of that. Yeah, you just feel for so many people who have yet to find permanent housing. I mean, 400 or more mm -hmm. of those people that are uh, dealing with this constantly, day in and day out. Uh, so hopefully they can get that help they need. Uh, good morning to you. It is 6.08. Uh, looking at our skies, yep, it's overcast. Here we are. This is the live look at Pacific Beach, Crystal Pier right there. And uh, as far as the waves go, they're a little weaker, it's two to four footers today, not as high of a risk of rip currents. And later this afternoon, the sun will be out. So, hey, may it be a good beach day. <laughs> Take a little break and head out that way if you can. Otai's east, uh, mountains east facing camera showing that sun coming up right over the clouds. Always love to see that kind of view like you're in an airplane almost. Uh, cloud coverage, here's what's going on. It did come all the way through, and now you're seeing little bits of clearing here and there. And I show you that to show you that there's hope the sun will be out early. Uh, didn't quite get that full sun, uh, obviously, for sunrise time. But later this morning, it does look like a lot of you should see at pretty soon. I say that now, but of course, you know the marine layer. It does its own thing sometimes. Uh, we're hoping that there's a weaker onshore flow today. It does look like there should be uh, that will allow those clouds to retreat back and the temperatures to warm up, kind of like they did yesterday, but maybe even warmer today. 56 in Poway, 56 in Escondido, 58 Del Mar, 62 downtown over the next 12 hours you're on your way to the upper 60s that's for downtown san diego and for many inland spots i mean this is pretty nice 75 in ramona 75 in el cajon 71 in la mesa so typically this time of year 
upper 70s in these inland valleys would be normal. We are still below average by just a couple of degrees, but we will feel warmer than yesterday even once we do get that sunlight. This rain cloud forecast model shows by noon Hey, that's sunshine for everybody, pretty much. Just a thin little layer of clouds right along the coast, but it does look like a pretty clear afternoon for you. By tonight, the marine layer's back, and then it'll stick around a little bit more. So we're going to see a change in our weather pattern yet again here uh, coming up. I'll explain that in your full forecast in a few minutes. Let's show you what's going on uh, with traffic right now. Drive times are great. If you're headed on the 5 southbound between the 54 and the border, just takes you eight minutes. And I do not see any crashes on any of our major freeways. That's always a nice... Uh, start to the day, our 5, the 805, no backup right now, so a pretty smooth commute. Let's check out the border wait times. Yeah, we know those are not so smooth at this early morning hour. A lot of people in line at the general line in San Ysidro, 125 minutes to get through there. Otay Mesa's port of entry, it'll take you 100 minutes. <laughs> Three, two, one, Red Shooter! some cash on your way out and look for a red shoe because today is red shoe day coming up we'll talk to ronald mcdonald <laughs>